Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, it's time for our little mini Christmas build. Like last year, uh, I want to send you all a little Christmas present, but I can't send you all a little Christmas present, A, can't afford it, B, don't have your addresses. Um, so what we did last year was I did a little build, uh, and it was a diagnostic relay, but I thought a lot of uh, people who own XK8s, XKRs and other Jaguars would be really um, pleased to have in their stocking. So I gave the instructions and you could build it for yourself. Um, so this year's Christmas build isn't a tool as much as an added little feature for your XK8, XKR and many other vehicles should you just adjust the design just a little bit. Firstly, I'd like to say I've had a Christmas present where I bought myself but kind of recommended by Gary Van Remortel and others, and that is we've got an on-camera light now, so hopefully that improves some of the pictures that you guys get. Um, we've covered this previously on A Secrets of the XK8, and you can look at that for the detail, but essentially these cars were built at a time when some natural substances were included in the sand deadening, and mices, mouses, loved them. And so this is mouse damage, and it's been chewed away. And mouse is particularly like this area because it's got a nice little picnic area to sit and munch away or drag that away for their nests. So this is very often um, destroyed on an XK8, XKR. And I'm going to be doing an episode on how to replace this very soon. But in the meantime, there's no point in replacing this for it to be chewed again. This is not the worst thing mice can do. Some people will have unfortunately experienced mice's chewing through their wiring. So if mouse damage is a thing for you, carry on watching. Interesting, there's some, uh, the actual teeth marks of mice on this cap. Uh, didn't attack the others. Oh, it did just a little bit there. That one's fine. Before you realise, oh, that's much more tasty. So there's a couple of ways of going at this commercially. Um, most devices basically are electrical and they put a strange signal for your wiring and there's a pitch that, in theory at least, deters mice. A couple of issues with that for me one is the car systems do go dead after a little while. Um, so you've got to wire them up in such a way that they can generate this signal while the car is dead. And that adds on to the fact that our cars do not survive well with poor batteries. So I really didn't like that idea. So I've gone another road. And that is... to use the turret tops, which you'll note are mine, have some little holes in, to create a mouse deterrent using the wonderfully named mouse oil. And I should be adding to my service records, top up oil in gearbox, top up oil in engine, top up mouse oil in struts. So, how does this work and how can you make it? Firstly, wasn't kidding about the mouse oil. Here I have a bottle of Grandpa Gus's mouse oil. So my car has these suspension strut tops. Uh, they're just plastic, quite heavy plastic, it's got to be said. Push on, knock on caps that to tidy up the top of the suspension tower. Later cars don't have them. It's just a cost down thing. But you can buy them. They're available from breakers yards. They're available from various parts suppliers. There are two serial numbers for them. But the only difference between serial numbers is this. It's a little mark on mine and it's a cutout on the other serial number. And that cutout is to allow the cable that controls the CATS suspension system to go through here and attach to the top of your strut. 
So either one will actually do. You might just have to drill a hole and cut a little bit out if you've got caps. Without the top on, that's what they look like. And the center of the strut just stands proud of flush by about three millimeters. Now that obviously increases a little as the uh, rubbers collapse. So we need our system to be recessed into the cap just a little. Okay, so for this build, what you're gonna need is some basic hand tools and these parts. So you're gonna need the caps from your suspension struts. Now I'm fully aware of the fact that not everybody has these fitted. They're not on every single vehicle. And so if you've not got them fitted, you'll have to find some or buy some. Can get them from breakers, can get them from suppliers. But in fairness, they are becoming quite a rare item. They were a cost down issue. So one of the things that basically serves no actual purpose, it's cosmetic. So are eliminated from a lot of later cars. However, if you don't have them at all and you want to do this task, <clears throat> fear not. I will uh, have a video coming up after this video, which shows you how to make this cap um, in a reasonably professional way, i.e. it's mostly bought as another item and then just some quick mods, um, so that you can install it to prettify your car or to do this mouse deterrent device. Or if you've got these on your car and you really don't want to modify them in any way because you are a, a real purist when it comes to uh, originality, then you can follow those instructions as well. But you do need these. And my cap is an NJA 3975A with no cutout for cats. If you have cats, it will be an NJA 3975B. You're going to need... Ideally one of these and I'll put a link in the description below to something very similar. It's an aluminium um, Screw top tin sort of thing you might put makeup or cream in Dimensions aren't exact as in you don't need to get exactly the same, but just for your reference We're talking something 56 in uh, 55 56 in diameter something like that and it's about 26 long or deep or tall next you're going to need an m5 screw or bolt i've used a countersink headed stainless one mine is 25.3 mil long but similar is fine ideally you will also get a 5 mil riv nut or if you haven't got one of these, a five mil nut will do. Um, the advantage of a rib nut is it's just that bit longer and therefore easier to assemble this thing after you've built it. You'll need some makeup sponges. These could be replaced with cotton wool or some other sort of cloth, but these are absolutely perfect for the job. Um, so you can either raid somebody's um, drawer as I did or you can buy these in bulk online and these are five millimeter thick and the examples I have are da, 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 59 mil in diameter and I have two of them but again similar will do not strictly necessary but useful is an o-ring or some other similar sort of rubber washer let's call it that has a bore smaller than your five mil and the only reason i say that is just so it pushes onto your bolt and doesn't easily pull back off just a, a push fit and a washer with a five mil hole You can actually build this project without the tins. I say there'll be a link in the description below, they're not expensive. But another option is a suitable sized aerosol cap. And um, I built the prototype for my B 
build using an aerosol cap a little like this. And kind of key to the whole deal will be some mouse oil. Yeah, never going to get bored of saying mouse oil. So, you know, you've got to work out. It's used as this to lubricate, lubricate mice. Is this what you get from squeezing sufficient numbers of mice? Or is this the oil that repels mice? Let's hope for the last one. So this is uh, Grandpa Gus's brand, mouse oil. And it gives off a really uh, quite pleasant smell, if I'm honest. It's somewhere between a citrusy and a piney smell. Tools. I'd recommend getting yourself a cone um, drill or something else that's really suitable for cutting thin substances because we're going to be drilling the tin or the cap. And if you have a standard drill, they tend to have quite an aggressive tip that cuts and twists and grabs and you'll tear things. So a cone drill is actually useful and a brilliant tools anyway. Either way, you're going to need to be able to drill 5mm holes. Some super glue or similar, uh, you could get away with a contact adhesive if you wish. And it is really useful, though not strictly necessary, to have a hole punch that's going to make a hole big enough for your 5mm drill to pass through. So first mission is to pick up your strut cap, whether it be the original Jaguar one like this, or... You'll have watched the video that it will come after this one on how to create an alternative. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the rivnut in the middle here. And then we're going to put some holes in the bottom edges of this cap. Because big fingers, small opening, uh, my first little tip is take your screw or bolt and put your riv nut on the end of it and you want the flange at the far end they just screw enough on that you can hold on to this next apply your super glue or other chosen glue to the flange oops on the bottom as we're going to use it at least of the riv nut i've used a um Gorilla super glue, um, but any of them will do. And as I say, contact adhesive would probably do just as good a job, though I haven't tried it. Oops, mistake. Now, what we want to do is carefully, hence having the bolt, position this in the middle of the cap. And there's a molding mark in there, which means it's relatively easy to drop that near the center. Once you're in position, press down firmly for a few seconds. Next, we've got our lid whilst the cap's drying. What I want to do is cut it down in length. I'm just going to take off the um, ridge around the top here. So I've actually got a nice line to cut against. And again, just for reference on my tin, that's taking it down to 25 mil. But this doesn't have to be an exact science. And I'm going to do that with my Dremel and cutting blade. It's a handle of a hammer.
Now what we need is a 5mm hole in the middle. Again, location doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look right. So a good recommendation is drop washer in there, even it up, equal gap all the way around, and it's relatively easy for you to, by eye to spot, literally, the center. Then, give it a little tap. Thin aluminium. And then when you're going to use our cone drill, and 5mm is a second size on this, so again, relatively easy. Use no weight at all. Let the drill do the work, and be pushing down on a hard surface like my little blocker did. And I think it's nearly for the first one. Yep, that's for the first hole. So what I'm going to do now is just let it cut down to put the second side hole. The block of wood slows its descent. And so you're able to drill through quite thin things because drilling the wood slows the drill going down and so allows that to go through without snagging. Yeah. If you want to do burr, stick it on the back, gently in contact, really slow rotation. And that's our centre hole. What I want now is to mark out some concentric holes for the smell to come out of so again just use a washer easy to eye up because again it's far more important but it just looks right than it is right this sort of thing nobody's going to see it it's just the satisfaction you get out of doing it right yourself use that to draw A ring and use another one there we go we got a couple of concentric rings in there What I'm going to do is drill four holes on that circle. And four holes on that circle. Smaller size, which on this drill is a four mil. But not important. into one of my existing holes there that wasn't intended just give that a flatten I just say I know I haven't but 
I must recommend that you uh, wear gloves when doing this job because the aluminium can be sharp. Decided to enlarge them to six more just to tidy up the ragged bit I just made. Five now. Just there we go. So there's our base, and I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more holes just because I think it it'll look better. No other reason. <laughs> All smooth. Next, you're going to want some holes in your cap. Because I've got one, I'm going to use a chalk marker. And all I want is a guide line. So I'm literally going to sit two washers there. Sit the pen on top of it and turn the cap. And on my cap, I'm going either side of the notch. I'm going to put four holes, approximately eight mil spaced, either side of that notch. Again, okay, position is relatively unimportant. All that's important is it looks right. And I'm going for five mil holes in the cap. There's a tiny bit of burring on the inside, so I'm just going to use a utility knife to cut that off. Okay, so there's the holes in it. All we're going to do now is I'll go and wash the chalk off, literally what just wash off, and uh, give it a bit of um, plastic restorer, that sort of stuff. That little mark is where I touched it with a super glue like a numpty. Mostly come off. There we are. Okay, so neat as. Next we're on to little makeup sponges. They're sort of if I had to guess, latex foam, but whatever they are, just check that they're absorbent, you know, 
pour a bit of water on, give them a massage and see if they hold water. There are some sponges that are literally pieces of rubber and they're just from pushing makeup around. These are actually absorbent um, and they're the perfect sort of consistency to hold lots of mouse oil. So what we want to do with these is get our six mil punch or similar proximate center and that's sufficient next one proximate center fish out the little cork and you've got your two pads at this stage you've practically finished your build and optionally you could spray paint this piece but I kind of like it looking like that I think that looks smart so what we're going to do is a quick test that is put your screw or bolt of choice through then load up your makeup sponges I'm putting two in, you can put more if you want. They're cheap as chips. You will be inserting mouse oil into there, but whilst it's still dry, what we're gonna do is just check it out. So we've got our riv nut glued in the bottom. We've got this, and this is why the riv nut is better because it sticks forward. It's easy to get the bolt into position. If you use a nut, this is eminently doable, but it's just a bit more fiddly. There we go. So we're in in the rivet up. And we're just gonna spin it up. Okay. Just level it off in the cone of this because now we're just going to pull it a little bit deeper into position. That's going to make the bottom of this a little bit concave. And the reason for doing that, the top of your strut stands up about five millimeters proud, and uh, which is about where this is. I'm just giving a bit of clearance and squeezing it down a bit. There we are, looks really smart. It's just distorted panel, just a fraction. And I've got about five mil clearance between here and here. So just to make that visual for you. I'm talking about that gap. And that's because the tops of the struts poke through just above the surface. So you might need to pull that down or use a shorter bolt depending on where yours are. As the top suspension mounts compress and collapse over time, the top of the strut sticks through further and further. And it's one of the ways you can tell that you need to replace them is how far it sticks out. Mine are five mil above flush and they're used but in very good condition. So um, if yours are much higher than that, it gives you other reasons to look at your car. So our next step is to add mouse oil. This fabulously named stuff. Other products are available. So um, I'm gonna do, open her up, little uh, shaker type spout, and shake some of this out onto the first of our makeup pads. Be generous. You don't want it to drip, as in drip off the pad. So you're not after actually um, soaking this thing, just making sure it's got plenty of 
mouse essence. <laughs> I've been a bit messy here. Not very really good at shaking this bottle. But the beauty of it is, of course, the pad's absorbent, so I can put it on there. Just suck it up. And they've got a decent covering. Oops, done it again on that side. See it's soaking quite easily. Then flip her over. A little bit on the other side as well. A little bit of aluminium there. Right. Work surface is not very clean. And because we've put some liquid on it, this has started to distort. It's swollen up just a little bit and is no longer flat. That's all good because now this is mouse oiled up. We can drop it into our little tray like so. And get on with our next one. I'm using two. You can use more. Doesn't make any odds. Um, what you don't want is the mouse oil dripping everywhere. So again, don't go completely mental. Oops. It's like an underbonnet air freshener as well. This it smells really nice. But apparently not to mice who really don't like this stuff. All right, so I've got a good dabble on there. So I've got a few of those bits and pieces. A bit more on this side. And the fact you've got two layers, at least, means it's not going to evaporate off fast. Okay. And get our pad, Let's soak a little bit that up off the turf, work surface. Pop that on there. Two fits nicely sort of inside. If you stack them up, it wouldn't matter too much. And then just as a piece of elegance, really, a little bit of sophistication. Little washer on top. And then we're adding our five mil, well, I think this is a four mil O-ring. What that means is you can push it down to pinch the middle just a little bit. Yeah, sort of tucked in. And it means that the nut, the bolt even, is retained. The pads are retained. It's one unit. It's just easy to handle and away you go. Um, I've actually got these, oops, nice little um, thumb screws, or I guess you would call them, with a little black head on, which I'm eventually going to replace these with. But not, I, don't, I can't tell you where to get them from because I don't know. I have literally got a knob drawer. <laughs> um, I think these were the feet off of something so you screwed them up into a piece of apparatus to level it off anything that looks like a thumb wheel i always save really useful but we'll carry on with this because everybody can find a screw and pop that in there So you know it's retained, it's easier to manoeuvre. You don't want to screw this up too tight because if the end of the bolt comes through the other side of the riv nut, you'll jack the riv nut off the glued uh, mount that you've created. But um, just pinch it up to the extent where it's not going to come undone. It can't escape anyway, so there's no fear of it wandering off. And make sure it's below the surface. A little bit tighter, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. That is our mouse deterrent strut top built. And if you do have a collection of thumb wheels and knobs, your own knob drawer, I'll show you what it looked like then. There you go. Very smart. Looks like it's intended to be. And we can now fit that to the car. So that's the bit we're talking about. It sits a bit proud, so it, this needs to be under flush. Just hook one of the three legs in position, then a second one, and then just distort the cap slightly to get a third into position and there you go and the reason I've put my holes uh, basically around just under 180 is should I choose to oops that's not quite in um, I can turn it round and nobody's any the wiser but my intention is to have them aiming at the mice so that next time they're trying to have a picnic they're not so keen. <coughs> this, is, this is my prototype that I made earlier, and this one just utilizes the top off an aerosol. It happens to be a clear cap, but obviously I could have sprayed that a color or use a different cap. So you don't have to get the aluminium trays if you don't want, aluminium uh, little tins, cups. And as I said, this, we'll show you in another video how to make one of these. This is what sits proud of the surface. And as this rubber decays, so that will rise through the uh, top of the strut and encroach more and more. So. Having this just on top of that means that if your suspension starts to fail, it'll pop the cap off. You might see that as good. You also might lose the cap. So make sure you've got a decent clearance. You can still see the marking outline on that. I'll have to clean that off, but that's the other one. And the warmth from the engine will obviously activate the uh, mouse oil further if you do start it but it gives a really good effect. You lift the bonnet and you do get that little waft. That's fabulous. And as the air intake for the interior is there outside of the seal, it doesn't affect any interior smells. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this. I've quite enjoyed it as a little project. Um, now the mice won't be getting at my sound deadening and I've had a right little feast around the corner in here, I notice as well. There you go. Um, I will get to work on replacing that sand deadening in those areas. It's hard, if not even impossible, to buy the OE stuff. So I'll be using something else. That's another little video yet to come. How to change that and what substances do I use? Purdy's relatively clean at the moment so she's been washed before she's been popped in the garage uh, she may come out over the winter i'm not the sort of person who does uh, put her into hibernation completely obviously i don't on purpose take her out in foul weather but she's not clean clean as you can see and over the winter period i hope to be giving her a bit of a proper valet um, there's all sorts of scuffs and marks on her at the moment which i think have come about from living outside and various things getting on her, cats included. So we'll be waxing her up, polishing her up, and doing a little bit of body correction. 
I'm going to be doing some really minor repairs on the seats. My seats are in excellent condition, but I don't know if you can see, I might have to actually turn the lighting down for this. Areas where the grain has started to get a bit dirty and some scuffs where the colour has come off a little bit. So I'll be looking at uh, doing some repairs there. And we'll also hopefully be taking the seats out, not only to do that, but to do some secrets of the XK8. I was gonna do some work on replacing the speakers in Purdy with some modern cheap ones, but thanks very much to Damien and his channel, OND um, R Jaguar XK8, please check it out. Uh, he's recently done a comparison on some brand new, modern, cheap speakers. I think £20 a set JVCs um, versus the old tatty uh, speakers that have aged rather over the 20 odd years that Jag put in. And even though these are the base units, um, it has to be said that the cheaper speakers didn't really um, cut it for me. Um, that's not a snobbish thing at all. I'm certainly no audiophile, but it has convinced me that if I'm going to swap the speakers out, I need to swap them for AOE. I think very difficult to imagine me spending that sort of money or something that's aftermarket, but really rather decent quality so that I don't feel shortchanged. So that's gone on to the back burner, if I'm absolutely honest for now. Um, because I spent a lot of money on some bits and pieces that I think you're going to be quite excited about. And we'll be doing some videos with Purdy and those, hopefully again over the Christmas holidays, and maybe even bringing you that video over the Christmas holidays. Okay then, guys and girls, that's the end of this video. Uh, we've had several comments saying, not seeing enough of little Molly. Here he is. Um, she was a little bit poorly recently, but she's back again now, aren't you? Yes. And uh, Molly reminded me that we've still got some calendars left. There was about 20 still, I think. Uh, thanks to everybody who's bought one. These are now more than broke even, so it's not a concern. But if somebody does want a calendar, get your order in on the website right away. Can't guarantee you'll get it for Christmas, but we'll do our best to get it to you for New Year now. Um, great things and a beautiful winner shot on the front there everyone numbered an individual so thank you ever so much for watching everything that's been on to the garage this year there will be a sort of review of the year uh, video coming out I'm not really sure on when things are happening but we're all done from us from john molly and joe and from purdy blue from yogi the jeep and from betsy the t4 have a fabulous Christmas, guys, even if it's a little smaller and quieter than normal. And we'll see you all again very soon on To The Garage. All right, Mom. Bye.